Dear Evan Hansen, featuring music by Binge Pask and Justin Paul and book by Steven Levinson, is a groundbreaking and insanely popular musical. From its premiere on Arena Stage in Washington, D.C. in July of 2015, up to its Broadway debut in December of 2016, it's gained a massive critical acclaim, Tony Awards, and a dedicated fan base, or rather, fansons. And it deserves all of it. It's a painfully accurate look at social anxiety, grief, how death is handled in the age of social media, and the moral ambiguity of doing a bad thing for a good reason or vice versa. It features beautiful songs beautifully performed by the entire cast, especially Ben Platt who must be protected at all costs. But those are all things that are commonly discussed when Dear Evan Hansen is the topic of conversation. Today I'm going to share with you how the musical uses subtext to subtly reinforce Evan's journey through song. Subtext can be found all throughout music. Merriam-Webster defines the word as the implicit or metaphorical meaning of a literal text. It basically means using an exaggerated scenario to illustrate what you're feeling. So say, for example, when Demi Lovato sings, I will be rising from the ground like a skyscraper. She's not singing about someone literally rising like a skyscraper, but she's using that analogy as a means to convey the feeling of empowerment and taking hold of your future after a difficult period of time. Binge Pasek and Justin Paul were first introduced to the songwriting concept by famed composer Stephen Schwartz. Paul recalls the conversation as, Schwartz was like, sometimes characters say or sing one thing, but mean another, Pasek adds. The duo put this tool to great use in their excellent original musical, Dear Evan Hansen. They use subtext, the lack of it, or any combination of the two to track the arc of the main character, Evan Hansen. To study how they do this, we're going to take a look at four of the most important songs in the musical. Waving Through a Window, For Forever, Good For You, and Words Fail. We're first introduced to Evan at the very beginning of the show, but his first solo, Waving Through a Window, is our first look into Evan's psyche and spirit. And as you might expect, the song is suffused with subtext. The title and main theme of the song is Waving Through a Window, but Pasek and Paul had to go through a few drafts before they wound up with this version. Earlier renditions of the song were titled Total Reinvention and Infinite Island, but the pair felt like those titles were too on the nose, and neither of them fit the feeling they were striving for. Waving through a window is the perfect fit, and it also works on multiple fronts. In addition to describing Evan's sense of detachment from those around him, Pasek says, What works about waving is it uses a metaphor that also makes sense with the literal nature of the internet and glass and screens. The window Evan waves through is both an invisible one and a very tangible one. The song is littered with many instances of connotation. The four main themes are the window, the car, the sun, and the forest. Each of these ideas is given time to grow and expand, with the time devoted to each ranging from 4 to 30 lines. This conveys that Evan has gotten used to using subtext, using alternative scenarios to explain how he feels. He finds it easier than talking about his actual feelings. By the time For Forever rolls around, Evan has initiated his lie that he was best friends with Connor, and this song is Evan telling the false story of a great day he had with Connor, directly to Connor's family. At first glance, it's a pretty straightforward song. Evan tells the family about a fake day, and that's about it. But on further inspection, I realize that nearly the entire song is subtextual. It may start as Evan simply telling the family a fake story, but it soon becomes a therapeutic exercise for Evan, conjuring a beautiful picture of what Evan wishes his life could look like. In reality, there was no one there for him after he broke his arm. So what if in For Forever, his best friend was there for him immediately? It's this train of thought, stemming from the subtext of this song, that develops into one of the most interesting and important questions of the musical. Is Evan telling this lie for the good of Connor's family, or for the good of himself? At this point in the show, Evan's lie is beginning to crumble. Alana is starting to catch on to him, Jared feels abandoned and betrayed by Evan, and Heidi feels like she's lost her son to this new family. It's primarily Heidi's song, with Alana and Jared both stepping in to take a verse. This leaves Evan only singing the bridge, but while he doesn't sing for very long, this verse is vital to his character. 
Evan has nine lines in this song, and in those nine lines, he uses three different metaphors to explain how he feels about what's happening. Do you remember when I said that there are four main metaphors in Waving Through a Window? The song that lasts for three minutes and 56 seconds? Having three separate connotations in such a short amount of time conveys the fractured state of mind Evan is in. He can't put together one complete thought in an attempt to hang on to the lie he's created. Speaking on this, Binge Pasek says, This was a way to show Evan scrambling to experience express what he's feeling, grasping at whatever he can think of in the moment, using mixed metaphors instead of one consistent image to illustrate the idea. <sighs> Words fail. This song takes place near the end of the musical, and it features Evan finally explaining to Connor's family that everything he's told them, his whole story has been a lie. There is next to no subtext in this song. The idea of the song is that he can't find the words to express and explain what he's done, and this is reflected in the lyrics. He can't think of a metaphor, connotation, or analogy to explain his actions. He's forced to painfully tell this family all that he's done, with every word being literal. In fact, the only time subtext is utilized is at the very end, with the line Step into the sun and this is a callback to the sun metaphor present in both Waving Through a Window and For Forever. In Waving, he wanted nothing but to stay out of the sun. In For Forever, the sun shines on his face in a false scenario. Now, it's used to show that Evan is finally ready to come clean, to the Murphys, to his mom, to himself, and he's ready to continue his life. If Evan was singing about how words fail him and he continued to express himself in such dramatic and processed ways, the song would feel kind of empty. To enhance the intimacy and impact of the song, Pasek and Paul had to strip away Evan's comfort zone, his preferred method of communication. Much like the story beats down and takes everything away from Evan, the writers were forced to do the same. Subtext is used throughout the entire musical. But the songs I spoke on are the most notable and track Evan's journey as a character the best. In Waving Through a Window, we're shown that Evan has become accustomed to watching the world pass by him, and he's fluently speaking a language of passivity, using a few select metaphors to exemplify his life. In For Forever, he dives in and paints a complete picture of a day that never occurred, finding his deepest desires and filling them in a perfect way. In Good For You, Evan struggles to hang on to his fake life and jumps from metaphor to metaphor searching for a suitable phrase to express himself with. And finally, in Words Fail, he sings totally honestly for the first time. No story, no allegory, just Evan with a broken heart attempting to apologize for his actions to a grieving family. And that's one of the things I love most about this brilliant, heartfelt show. That it's not just what characters say that matters, it's how they say them. How's it going? Thanks for watching that video. If you liked it, like it, share it with any of our fellow fans that you think would like it, and subscribe to see a video like it every Tuesday. Speaking of which, I apologize for the lack of a video last Tuesday at a show and wasn't able to get it done. Uh, and I want to issue a big shout out to Lex Nicole for suggesting I make the video on Dear Evan Hansen. It was a great idea. And if anybody watching has an idea on a movie, a musical, a show, anything you want to see me make a video on, drop a comment and I might make a video on it.